all good? Everyone can hear me? I, I think I can hear myself a bit, so it should be fine. All right, so uh, I hope you're all still awake. I know it's been a long and interesting day, but uh, I want to talk a bit more about the CTA pyramid because I get a lot of questions about people who are very ambitious and want to go for it and motivated to go for it, but it's not always easy to find your way there. So many people focus, and I did the same, on, so yeah, now you have the prerequisites, what do you do next? But actually, that's already like, a few steps ahead. Maybe we should go back and see how can we make the journey to that place even easier. And that's what I want to talk about today. So before I actually keep on blabbering, maybe I should introduce myself like polite people do. <laughs> so this is me, um, but then on a the big screen, this is me in real life. I'm Lilith Van Biesen. I am a uh, Trailhead fanatic. I'm at a thousand plus badges. I'm a bit proud of that because it took a lot of effort. <laughs> I am also very much an enthusiast of certifications, and it's really that learning mindset that I think helped me a lot when I went for the CTA. I am uh, 23 times certified, and yeah, so as you can guess, one of them is the CTA. Um, I'm also a SIMA group uh, co-leader, so if you don't know what SIMA is, that's actually um, a meetup group where we organize sessions on particular architectural topics, but it's not always like, so now this it's, um, architecture 101, 102, it's not like that, right? We try to look at it from different angles. Um, one of the last sessions that we did, for example, was on revenue cloud and how it's different from the CPQ industries. So, you know, we try to look at it in different ways because as an architect, you'll definitely get these questions from your client, like, why are they pushing this or that? Shouldn't I be using this? I saw this demo of that. So having a bit of project knowledge uh, really helps. and. That's what Saima also tries to do. Um, I'm also a Salesforce Principal Architect at Capgemini, and, and this is um, my passion. <laughs> I'm also an amateur zookeeper of two dogs and two cats, which might be the most challenging of all. <laughs> so if you want to connect, you can reach out via uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and you can also find me on, of course, Trailhead, otherwise I wouldn't get those badges. But if you want to get a quick response, it's better to go via LinkedIn because I often forget that I actually have Twitter. <laughs> so you might have to wait a bit for a reply. All right, let's jump in. So I think we all know what this is. I think we've seen it before. It's the track or the pyramid that they have prescribed on how do you go for the CTA. It has those two nice elements. It has the application part. It has the system part. So. I mean, that's clear, right? That's straightforward. All you have to do is for go for data architect, and then sharing of visibility and a platform builder and then platform dev one, and then you're pff, application architect. And you know, then you go for the identity and access management, you go for the development lifecycle and deployment architect, and then you go for integration architect and ugh, you're almost there. You're already system architect as well. Of course, we know it takes a bit more, so. Salesforce recognizes this too. So these are kind of like the foundations that they have set forth. We have more than that, and they have already recognized this in adding also these um, dotted arrows where we see that actually, well, if you want to do any of those, probably you should start with admin, right? <laughs> that makes sense. And then if you want to go for the application architect, eh, you might want to do the experience cloud one too, because it does contain a lot of information that you will need later on. So, okay. We know where to start, but then there's this new pyramid, and what's up with that? <laughs> you know, where does this fit in? Because we see that actually you now have two solution architect certifications, which are also there. You have on the one hand the B2B solution architect, which we'll dive a bit, bit in uh, later, but then you also have the B2C architect. So let's break it down to the certs, right? Again, data, sharing and visibility, platform app builder, and platform dev one. Now these sound familiar because these are exactly the same ones that you need for the application architect. So okay, we already have those, that's fine. But then for the B2B, uh, sorry, the B2C solution architect, you see that you actually have also the platform app builder, you have the integration architect, and then you have the marketing cloud email specialist. So there's some new ones there, I mean at least one. So let's combine them because actually that's what I think you should do. 
while they are not part of the traditional pyramid, I think it makes sense to actually also go for the solution architect certifications first before going for the CTA. And the reason for that is that one, you really, well, I actually put a slide for this. So <laughs> um, the reason for this is that it really focuses on bridging this business and technology. So how do you bring the best experience to your users? If you missed how to do that, you should find Melissa's session from this morning because it really covers it quite broadly. And then how do you also make use of this um, out of the box capabilities? Because in the end, your customers are buying Salesforce, which means they should at least to some extent be getting an advantage, a benefit of what has been there, of what has been provided for them. If not, then why not custom development, right? <laughs> so that's one of the things that we have to really be that bridge. We have to know the technology so we can bring the value. You also need to leverage more intricate knowledge of Salesforce products. So um, <clears throat> how do these products work? What are their functionalities? Because when you go for the CTA, you will see that it's, it's a bit broader than just the core that Salesforce always says, this is what you need to know. You need to at least know a bit more of what is out there. Why are the products out there? What can they do? And why does this even make sense? And then this is a very important one, is understanding the multi-cloud implementations and considerations. So if you go into a situation, which product makes more sense there? I just named two. Revenue Cloud, CPQ Industries, you know, <laughs> what's up? Which one should we use? And these are maybe not the ones that you will need for the solution architect ones, but for example, B2B Commerce and CPQ and partner community and where does one fit into the other? What, how do you combine them? What makes sense? And this, how do you combine them is still very important because we know the Salesforce strategy of seeing something shiny, saying, I like that, I'm gonna buy that for a lot of money. <laughs> and then I'm gonna try and incorporate that into my product. But we all know that before it really is incorporated, it takes a bit of time. So usually you'll have a connector here and a process there to really bring all those data flows together so that you can really work with these products in a unified way. And that is one of the things that this solution architects really focus on. But what is maybe more interesting, because these are two multiple choice exams, and well, the CTA is not, so why am I even talking about these? It's because the type of questions, in my opinion, is really very different from the ones that you get for the other types of certifications. In the sense that you have many use cases, many scenarios, and you have to really respond to them. You have to read very, very fast. <laughs> I thought I was a quick reader, until I saw that I only had five minutes left at the end of the exam and started to freak out. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it will make you really practice digesting a lot of information and quickly getting to those decisions. Of course, it's still an elimination process as multiple choice, you know, exams are, but it will help you already, you know, work from the right mindset. But wait, there's more. I'm getting all infomercial on you guys, so. <laughs> I've extended it even more, you know, one time offer only. Um, <laughs> I added actually the sales cloud, the service cloud, as you can see. I also added the uh, user experience designer, which if you were in Melissa's session, really resonates. And uh, I also added the Tableau CRM and Einstein Discovery Consultant. But why? It's not because I'm bored and I love doing exams. It's maybe slightly because, <laughs> but um, the, main, the main purpose here is actually, if you look especially at those two, like the sales cloud and the service cloud, together especially with the experience cloud that was already on there, you really see the benefit of doing these before you go for the sharing and visibility and the data architect. The sharing and visibility especially because there are some mechanisms that are very specific to these products. If you look at sales cloud, you'll see territory management, which is something that is a very specific sharing mechanism you need to know. But if you haven't, you know, dive into this content, it's completely new and it will not maybe um, make sense in the larger ecosystem. So therefore, doing Sales Cloud first makes a lot of sense, makes your life a lot easier afterwards. 
Same goes for the service cloud because there you have, for example, those case teams, but you also have the native sharing mechanism. So we already know that Experience Cloud has a lot of different sharing mechanisms. It's nothing that you would see necessarily if you're only working with sales and service. But there's also like this um, edge case because very, very frequently if you're talking Experience Cloud, you're also talking Service Cloud. And there's really a few mechanisms that really are on that edge. So doing Service Cloud makes a lot of sense, not just for the case teams, but for that particular border where they two cross. And then for uh, data, one of the requirements is that you really understand the sales and service standard objects, which, well, you're going to be able to remember and reproduce and apply if you've done those two certifications. All right, going into the Tableau CRM and Einstein Discovery Consultant. Now, this is not necessarily a must if you have experience with a BI tool. Because that's the thing about the CTA, you'll definitely have large data volumes. If you're solving a scenario and you don't see one, be very, very concerned <laughs> because likely you missed it. So you will likely have large data volumes. And how do you deal with that? We know that standard reporting only goes so far. If you really want to work with bigger data sets, it's not going to be sufficient. Plus, we're talking about a bigger problem, a bigger solution that we need to provide. It's not just Salesforce, they also have an ERP, they also have different other products. So maybe we should also get data from other systems outside of Salesforce. And then, sorry, so we're talking again, uh, I should not have drank <laughs> an energy drink. <laughs> sorry about that, yeah, I should have learned. Uh, <laughs> so how do you bring data from outside of Salesforce and inside of Salesforce together? And that is something that, well, any BI tool can maybe do, but if you don't have any experience with one already, why not go for Tableau CRM and then you can really go for an all Salesforce solution if you want on your uh, CTA board. And then finally, I don't want to go too deep into the UX designer because actually I really liked Melissa's session on that where she really covered why UX is vital. But from just a board point of view is if you're only looking at a technical solution, you're not gonna make it. You need to have an understanding of the business product, of, sorry, the business goals of the business users and how they are actually going to use the system. This is one of the things that I usually uh, ask the most questions about when I'm judging mocks, is just like, so how are, going, how are they going to use the system? Because it doesn't flow. And also you have a difference between your internal users where you can maybe get a lot done with training and change management, but your external users, that's something different. I mean, you're not going to be able to train them in the same way. So you need to make sure that whatever you have planned from a flow, from a business process, it needs to make sense. And that are some of the things that are addressed in the UX designer, as well as some methodologies that you can use to really understand you know, how do I get this information? How can I make sure that I convey this? And um, so it really relies also on the best practice of solution design. Okay, nice. Now, that was a very short session, unless there's even more. <laughs> so again, I've extended, but this time I've gone here. I added field service, part of specialist, and CPQ. Now, this confuses a lot of people because when you talk to Salesforce, they say, if you know core, with core they mean these three, that's all you need to know really for the board. So, okay, but I would advise to really do these as well, otherwise they wouldn't be in my PowerPoint, you know. So why? Well, the thing is that even if you don't use them, these products solve common business challenges. And they really show you how Salesforce does this. I'm not saying that it's the best way necessarily or whatever, but it's a proven method. It's something that definitely works for a particular set of, of businesses, right? And if you understand how they have solved them, you can get inspired on maybe how could you use or build a suitable data model for such a solution. You might not be really pushing field service all the way, but you might learn a bit more about, okay, so how does the resource skilling or resource crews or just some concepts there that can really help. 
as well as the handling of large data volumes and processing them for complex operations, scheduling, certain pricing. These are things that you see if you go through these solutions and how Salesforce has solved them. And again, even if on the board, you don't have to you know, pr propose any of these, that's absolutely fine, but at least you know if something comes up, how, what would be a typical way to solve this? Or even just to suggest as, I did not go for field service because this, this, or that. Just, you know, it opens up again your perspective and allows you to look at things from a broader angle. So what are the, some of the uh, business challenges that you can see? Well, as I mentioned already, for field service, resource and skill management uh, and scheduling, work order and maintenance planning, asset and inventory management, and then for CPQ, of course, these product bundles, dependencies, incompatibilities, and especially, I think, these uh, product bundles. I can remember definitely quite a few mock scenarios that I did, which required at least to some extent some kind of product bundles or maybe some child or options or those kind of things. It's, it's not that rare, right? But we know that if you purely go with sales cloud, it's not gonna cut it. You need something on top. Is it CPQ that you need? Maybe not, maybe that's overkill, but you know from their data model what could be a way to solve it. And then we have, of course, complex pricing logic, long-term sales engagement and cycles, and then going into the marketing solutions. How do you nurture your prospects and visitors? How do you convert them? How do you take them along on a journey? How do you make sure that you're engaging with them? And how do you use different channels to really communicate with them, to make sure that you have all these different touch points covered. Okay, no more what's next. Maybe some, one more what's next. <laughs> but first, um, what do you do with this information? Because I've been talking and maybe you're like, okay, it makes sense, but how can I really use this, right? So um, you can't look at another person or their journey and say, I'm gonna copy paste this, right? But you can look at some of these things that are here and take some things from, ah, maybe, maybe I already have some sales cloud experience. Maybe I can do that or maybe I am actually missing that and should be the next step that I do before going for sharing and visibility because maybe my life will be easier if I do that. So those are some of the takeaways that I hope you take. And also one of the mistakes, let's say, that I made was really rushing through all the prerequisites and this, presentation is kind of like my counteracting that for all of you <laughs> because that was really a big mistake on my part because I rushed through them and I knew enough to do the exams, I knew enough to pass them, but I didn't know enough to really use them in a solution. But that's what you need to do. If you cannot do that, then yeah, for the board, you're gonna have a bad time. So it's better to really take your time, it will be worth later, you will have to spend the time anyway, so it's better to do it in a structured way that's not overwhelming you on all fronts. Um, and go a step further, just really make sure that you understand what's there. Because again, I figured, okay, I understand, yeah, you use web server for this and user agents for that, but I didn't understand why isn't it secure to go for web server in certain situations. It didn't make sense until I really started to dive into it. So these are some things that really help you just, you know, not only have a better shot at the exam because we all like to pass, we don't like to fail, <laughs> but it also just makes you more confident and helps you at the point where you are reaching the top of the pyramid, you are getting ready for the board, you have less of homework and, and you know, catch up to do. And then take structured notes. I know I'm way crazy in this, Anyone who has seen my nose knows that I go overboard. You don't have to be completely nerdy like me, but make something that works for you. So I don't put everything in a Google Doc, um, and then I refine it, and you know, I spend way too much time on this stuff. But you can have other ways to do it as well. So for example, I have uh, Jakub Stefaniak, who's a really good friend of mine, and he's a CTA as well in Poland. What he did is, he just took uh, screenshots and put them together in a mind map on Lucid Chart would never work for me. I would just get overwhelmed in that, but for him it really worked very well. 
So it's not because someone says, this is my style, that that works for you. Just find your own style. And these certification exams are, again, a good way to practice what works for you. How do you retain knowledge? And then I like this one because it rhymes. When in doubt, try it out. Um, if you really don't know something, just go and check it out in, a, in an org. There's nothing that beats hands-on practice. And whatever you test out there, you will remember far better than any health documentation could ever teach you or any demo could ever teach you. So this is just an example of what your journey could look like. For example, if you're going from admin to architect, maybe you start with administrator, go to platform app builder, dive into sales service and experience cloud, then get a bit more hands-on in the developer one before going for sharing and visibility. Something I hadn't mentioned yet is sharing and visibility. You also need knowledge on Apex-based sharing. So that's why doing the developer one, again, will likely help you and make it easier to pass that exam. Then data and poof, you're already application architect. That was fast. Then you go through. <laughs> Maybe it takes a bit more time than I'm just, yeah. Disclaimer, <laughs> forward-looking statement. Um, so then maybe you go for the development life cycle because that's usually the one that's easier to roll into for people who maybe have more of a functional background, haven't really had a developer experience, go into the int integration architect, which builds a bit further on the platform developer. So it's again, going a bit deeper into the developer path without fully having to, you know, create a complex solutions there. And then uh, identity and access management, usually people take as last because it's scary. <laughs> it's the one that people you know, fear the most. And I very much understand why. <laughs> so, um, but if you survive, then you're a system architect. And then what I would advise is dive a bit deeper into those different, um, you know, the product ones, the marketing cloud, the CPQ, the field service, the part of UX, all the ones that I added later on that were not part of the core, let's say. Um, go for the solution architects because, again, they will definitely help you already start getting the right mindset there, getting that solution based, but thinking of the risks, thinking of the considerations, really getting the right mindset in place. Tableau CRM, um, you could also do it before the solution architects because, again, if you're thinking about a multi-cloud setup, likely um, you're going to want to use Tableau CRM anyway um, or CRM analytics whatever the new name is, um, because when you're bringing together these complex data models for, for example, field service and CPQ, likely standard reporting will not cut it because you have way more uh, objects than your standard reports can support. For example, if you want to have accounts with opportunities and quotes, then in CPQ you also have like the quote line groups that you can have, and maybe your products also have child products and all those complexities. These become a lot easier to manage in a solution like Tableau CRM. So maybe I should have put it somewhere else, but yeah, it's a learning journey. And then hopefully, finally, you're ready to go for the CTA. Disclaimer, this last part will likely not be as short as this plate here, <laughs> but okay. I also have an example, and I won't go into as much detail for the developer one, it just tailored a bit differently. And these are just example journeys. Again, it's just to give you an idea of, okay, what do I take away? Well, if you could create something like this for yourself, thinking, okay, what makes sense for me based on my background, based on my knowledge, then I think you're in the right track. And really take your time. But wait, is there even more? Maybe, because Salesforce just keep <laughs> releasing <laughs> certificates. <laughs> So um, I created this before I saw that they added strategy designer and I haven't yet taken it. But from what I've heard, I would have had to add it like UX designer, strategy designer, and then CTA, that, that arrow. So maybe in the next iteration of this session, it will be there. But yeah, all of the other ones, more or less I've taken and I feel a bit guilty if I you know, go and uh, promote something that I don't know. Uh, the Omni Studio Consultant, I really like just because I really like the Omni Studio <laughs> uh, solution. I think it's really cool. Um, and I think it, again, shows you a different way that things can be done. Are you going to need to know Omni Studio for a CTA? No. Is it useful to maybe know a bit more about what's out there? Definitely, yes. 
Um, and then, yeah, dot, 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 because by the next time, even this slide will be outdated. <laughs> so, you know, um, that was my presentation. I guess it was maybe a bit shorter than I had to, so my apologies, but we'll use these um, additional minutes for any questions that you might have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, go ahead. I should probably wait in drinking that anyway. <laughs> Well, not necessarily so. I think, when, well, I'm the new school CTA, so, you know, <laughs> I don't have just the dev one. I, I had to go through the pyramid myself. But um, definitely, I think what has changed is um, the resources that are available. When, you know, CTA was first coming up, there was indeed no pyramid, and it was very difficult for people to understand what they needed to do when they were actually ready. It was a very different format, and it made it a lot more sink or swim Let's say either you, for example, had a CTA who could mentor you, who could show you this is what you need to focus on, this is the mindset that you need to have, or, you know, well, you've tried and you failed and you were frustrated maybe, or you were sad. Either way, not a, not a good outcome. So I think to that, that extent, most of the changes that I've seen with this pyramid, but also if you don't know, they added actually, let me go back to... I hope my computer can follow my, okay, almost there, come on, yes. So now all, all arrows point to CTA, but actually before you can go for the board, what they added was an evaluation, I don't know if you heard, it's a mini board with one CTA judge, one hour, instead of three CTA judges and more time. So for me, all those things that they are adding are beneficial because this evaluation will help you make sure that you're really ready. And the, um, the pyramid that they have established will already show you, okay, this is the type of knowledge that you need. There's trail mixes to do that. There's a lot of things that you can prepare. If anything, one of the things that becomes more difficult right now is one, there's so many resources, where do I start? I really created a developer org to keep track of all of the resources and so that I could see what have I done, what haven't I done. Um, but so a lot more resources and a lot more groups. Um, if you're on the journey, and especially if you're really nearing the end, go and check out the Architect Ohana. Again, another great initiative from Melissa. It will really help you, you know, um, find people who are also on the journey and who also maybe are struggling with the same thing, questioning the same thing, or they have found this really cool solution for a complex problem and they want to share it, which is inspiring for everyone. So I think, on that front, there's a difference, maybe from content point of view. When uh, the CTA started, Salesforce was not as extensive as it is right now, right? I think um, you still have visual force. I don't think lightning was even a thing yet. Um, so, you know, there was a lot less of functionalities that you needed to know. So that, on that front, you're definitely right. You know, it's a lot more to learn but it also meant that you had to really know these things even to a deeper level than you do need to know now. And you also needed to know a lot more of what is outside of Salesforce because Salesforce could not be your end-all solution that for some problems it can be now. So this answer is not at all what you should do for the CTA. It's not short and concise, but I hope it is at least complete. <laughs> Any other questions? No, so I, with multi-cloud, so traditionally, if, uh, if we're talking multi-cloud, we're talking different Salesforce products. If we're talking different Salesforce instances, likely we're saying multi-org. Yeah. That's a very good question because actually, um, a common misconception about the CTA that is a very, very technical exam. Of course, you need to have the technical knowledge to really build a solution in 
the very, very strict and very short amount of time that you have to prepare. But if you can't communicate it, then you know you should have stayed home because it's just a waste of your time. That's a, that's the only. I mean, it's a board. It's uh, you're talking to people, right? So you will have to really make sure that they understand your solution. They understand what your thought process was, because if you don't have the soft skills, I really don't think you'll have a good shot because it's a very communicative exam. You have to talk all the time. So yeah, I hope it answers your question. <laughs> Any other question? Yeah? So um, any time that you indeed have left, you can take to your uh, Q and A, and I think it's a I think it's a good thing because a lot of people are scared about the Q and A, which I understand. It's where they grill you, and you have to you know get all this input on did you do the right thing. You have to be confident in answering, and preferably keep smiling and being polite, which might be sometimes the most difficult of all. But um, actually, I always value the Q and A. Maybe before I jump into the why, there, you know that if you're not native, you have um, the ability to request additional time. And I see a lot of people, again, being scared to actually do this because then the Q&A becomes 20 minutes longer. I say don't, don't be scared, just take it. Take any time you can get because this Q&A is where you really pass. You might have done a good presentation, but you know, you likely forgot something. We're not machines, right? <laughs> you likely forgot something, or maybe your, you know, your, maybe your solution was really perfect, but the judges had a different interpretation of some of the requirements, and they will ask you, okay, so but what if actually they're not asking this, they're asking that? So any moment that you can use to really make sure that you understand the question, that you convey, that you can think on your feet, because that, if you look at the exam guide, is actually one of the criteria as well. Even if your solution is perfect, they will still ask you tough questions because they want to make sure that you understand what you're saying and you can change your vision, you can change your solution on the fly because that's what your customers will do. <laughs> They'll come in with something that's super pretty and they're like, ah, yeah, but I forgot to tell you, actually, these guys also will use the system, so what will they do? <laughs> and then you're like, okay. Uh, you don't have time to go back to your room, figure everything out, get back. You need to think and communicate. And I think we always, or at least Melissa and I, see the CTAs as kind of ambassadors, and it means being able to communicate and stand by your solution. So that's why this is important, in my opinion. Any other questions? Yeah? That's a good question. Well, it, for me personally, it depends on how you study, right? From, I find it very difficult to study just looking at text, and that's why I say if you, if you don't know what it's about, just do it, right? For example, the Omni Studio, if you go to Trailhead and you check those modules, you'll see in the resources it has this PDF and then a, a resource for the PDF, which actually is hands-on, step-by-step uh, -step exercises that you can do. So for me, I would never pass any of the exams if I hadn't really played around in an org at least. But it's, I, I'm sure it's very different for different people. Um, well, yeah, um, for sure. Let me, well, yeah. None at all is maybe a bit tricky, but for example, field service, I only had a pre-sales experience for CPQ. I did have experience, but I worked <laughs> on the, uh, what is it called, QCP. So that's like uh, the code calculation plugin, which is just JavaScript, which <laughs> is nothing at all to do with what they ask on the exam. So yeah, no. so I, in some cases you may have project experience, but it might not be broad enough anyway, or maybe it's tailored to whatever your customer needs. For example, for Sales Club, I've never worked with opportunity splits. We don't, I haven't seen any customer right now who really 
uses this, but it's something that you need to know for the exam. So, yeah, you can. <laughs> Any other questions? No? All right, great. Then uh, thank you so much for coming and listening to me. <laughs>